Hello, this is Kevin Kachansky, Director of Community Development for Radnor Township, and I'm here to present to you today the typical development process. The typical development process can include a variety of different steps. Those steps can include, but don't always need to include, a zoning petition, conditional use approval, land development approval, grading permit approval, building permit approval, and outside agency approvals. Following will be a brief summary of each one of those steps. The typical development timeline includes a variety of processes. Below you will see the process and the associated timeline. These are all approximations and depends on the complexity of the project and the timeline would be associated with that. For a zoning ordinance amendment, the typical timeline would be 12 to 18 months. For preliminary plan or conditional use approval, the timeline could range from six to 18 months. For final plan approval, the typical timeline is six to 12 months. Grading permit approval, three to four weeks. Building permit approval, two to three months. And for outside agency approvals, 12 to 18 months. For an initial project submission, would start with an applicant who intends to develop a property. When that happens, an analysis is done to determine if it meets the code. If the project meets code, then the applicant can file for land development approval. If the project does not meet code, the project either stops or the applicant would need to seek some form of relief. That relief can come in two parts. The applicant can file for relief from the zoning hearing board or the applicant files for an amendment to the zoning ordinance. Let's take this opportunity to talk about the zoning ordinance amendment process. The applicant would prepare an ordinance or map amendment and he would petition the commissioners for consideration of this amendment. It is at the sole discretion of the commissioners whether to accept this amendment for review or not. If the commissioners decide to not accept the petition, the project stops. However, if the commissioners do accept the petition for consideration, the amendment is sent to the township and county planning agencies for review. After a review period and a period of public comment, the ordinance is introduced at a meeting for the commissioners, at which point public comment is also provided. The commissioners would hold a public hearing at which public comment is once again sought. If the amendment is revised, the process starts all over again at the township and county planning agencies for review. The amended ordinance is once again introduced at a commissioner's meeting and another public hearing in front of the commissioners is scheduled, all of which allow for public comment during that process. Once the amendment is no longer being revised, the commissioners vote to adopt the ordinance. If the ordinance is approved, the applicant can file for land development approval. If the ordinance is not approved, the project again stops as it is non-compliant with the codes. Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Orsini. I'm your township engineer here at Radnor and the land development and the grading permit portions that are noted in the slideshow run through the engineering department. So the slideshow sets out the process. I'm gonna to try to boil land development down to the most salient points. When a developer comes in, they submit a land development application. That comes in the engineering department. Upon receipt of that, Plans are distributed amongst staff as well as two consultants, Gannett Fleming and Gilmore Associates. Those plans are reviewed against three ordinances, the Zoning Ordinance, the Stormwater Management Ordinance, and the Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance. Gannett Fleming reviews the Stormwater Management, Zoning, and Subdivision and Land Development. Gilmore reviews it from a traffic and transportation standpoint, as well as staff, we review them also. From that point, the plans and the review letters will be scheduled to be in front of the Planning Commission. When a project is ready to appear before the Planning Commission, notices are sent out to residents within 1,000 feet of the project. Also, our Planning Commission meetings are public meetings and all are invited to come. During this period of COVID, you can go online and register before or during the meeting to become a participant in the Zoom meeting. So your comments will be heard live to the Planning Commission. So the Planning Commission meets to review items such as land development. At that meeting, the applicant will be there with their team. 
The township team will be there, as well as all the planning commission members. They will hear the presentation from the applicant. They will hear comment from staff and the consultants. And as well, they have the review letters, which are going through during the meeting. The planning commission then makes a recommendation. The recommendation may be to approve, to approve with conditions, or to deny approval. They do not make the choice on whether the plan is approved. They are making a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Depending how the meeting goes and how much is covered, the applicant may have to come back for another round through the Planning Commission. And for this exercise, all this is based on the fact that if they needed zoning relief, this has all been addressed before they come to Planning Commission. So when this gets through Planning Commission, there is a recommendation. At that point, it's scheduled before the Board of Commissioners. Now there's two steps. There's preliminary plan approval, which is the first one. So a, an application would go before the Board of Commissioners for preliminary approval. Preliminary approval has two steps. There will be a meeting where there's a caucus in front of the Board of Commissioners. At caucus, no decisions are made. It is just informational for the Board of Commissioners. At the following Board of Commissioners meeting, they will be there for approval of their preliminary plan. That is a night the Board takes action on the plan. Now note that land development waiver requests go before the Board of Commissioners. All the zoning items go before the Zoning Hearing Board, not the Board of Commissioners. So there may be waiver requests as part of that preliminary plan approval. The Board may or may not approve them. Again, for this exercise, let's assume a project has received preliminary plan approval from the Board of Commissioners. The next step would be final plan approval. The difference between the two plans should actually just be minor cleanup items. So based on the Board of Commissioners meeting, the applicant will go back and revise their plans, assuming they got that preliminary approval, and they're going to appear again before the Board of Commissioners. The first meeting will be caucus. No action is taken by the board. It is informational to present the plans to the board. The second meeting is what, when they're looking for final land development approval. So at this meeting, if the board should so approve the plan, that's the final plan that the project will be built with from a site development standpoint. At that meeting, Again, questions may be risen and answered by the applicant, by the Board of Commissioners. If they receive final land development approval, the solicitor creates a resolution which includes a developer's agreement. In that resolution that the solicitor creates, in that developer's agreement, is a list of items that have to be done. First off, any requirements from the Board that were agreed upon are going to have to be shown on the plans. The review letters from staff, Gannett, Fleming, and Gilmore, they're included as part of that. And those items have to be addressed on the final plans. If there are any park and rec fees or any other fees that are part of this project, they are noted to have to be paid as part of the developer's agreement. Lastly, they will have to escrow funds for public improvements. That is included in the developer's agreement. So when all this gets done, the last step would be the recording of the plans. So when the plans are recorded, they are signed off by the township and the president of the Board of Commissioners. And then they are recorded at the county. Once they are recorded at the county, this project is able to move forward. And the plans that were approved and recorded at the county, they are the plans that the site must be built from. From that point, the applicant is able to obtain a grading permit. So the plans are more of a macro look at the entire site. The grading permit application goes more so into detail on the plans, specifically the stormwater management. They apply for the grading permit. Now the grading permit is there is no public notification or anything of that sort because the plans have been approved. This is just a finer detailed look at the site. Once the grading permit application is approved, that lets our community development department know that they can receive an application for building construction. 
So engineering is the site and community development takes care of the vertical construction through their building permit applications. So when our grading permit is approved, community development knows that based on the recorded plan for land development and the detailed look via the grading permit that all is as it should be and they can move forward on their building permit. So in the end, this is a, again a boiled down look at how planning commission works and the land development process as well as the grading permit. Just a reminder, all the planning commission meetings are public meetings. Everybody is welcome to attend via Zoom. The Board of Commissioners meetings are all public meetings and everybody is welcome to attend via Zoom. And staff is always available to answer questions regarding any of the projects. Lastly, if you look at our website, on the left-hand side, it'll say current land development projects. If you click on that, you will then see a list of everything that is in the land development queue from engineering. Look for the project you're, you're interested in. Click on that. You will see the review letters, uh, planning commission meeting minutes, planning commission recommendations. All that is in that website. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me directly or any other member of staff. And thank you for your time.